In the mid-1990s, a new toy line called Mighty Max captured the imagination of children around the world. Created by Bluebird Toys, the Mighty Max sets were small play sets that could be opened to reveal a miniature world inside. The compact design and unique playability of these toy sets made them a hit among children and adults alike. And now every time we see them, they spark a wave of nostalgia among those who grew up with these monsters and gross out toys. Hi, I'm Paul the Toy Scavenger, and this is the Toy Scavenger's history of Mighty Max toys. Thanks for viewing and remember to hit that little button to subscribe and keep up to date with the channel so let's jump to it. Welcome to the world of Mighty Max, the miniature playset toy sensation that captured the hearts of kids in the 1990s. When they hit the shelves, the toy line was a hit, becoming one of the top selling toy lines of the decade. But how did Mighty Max come to be? Mighty Max Toys, created by Bluebird Toys, was a unique concept that blended nostalgia and toy design in a way that we'd never seen before. The designer behind Mighty Max had a goal. It was to create Polly Pocket toys for boys. He wanted to create a line of miniature play sets that would appeal to boys by featuring an action adventure theme with a focus on the central character, Mighty Max. The premise of the Mighty Max toy line was that Max's dad left him an ordinary baseball cap but when Max put it on, he found himself transported to the horror zone where he was caught in a terrifying adventure and had to use cryptic clues to escape. He was alone and scared, but he was Mighty Max and he would find his way back home. This concept of being transported to different worlds with dangerous challenges and using clues to find your way back home was a major draw for kids and helped them to immerse in the world of Mighty Max toys. One of the unique features of Mighty Max was the wide range of playsets available, each with its own distinctive theme and story. From a skull dungeon to a dinosaur to an evil spaceship, there was a Mighty Max set for every child's interest. But Mighty Max wasn't just limited to the toy line. A cartoon series was also created, further expanding the Mighty Max universe and introducing new characters and stories to the toy line. These characters would become minifigures as the sets expanded along the series. Among the various playsets in Mighty Max toy line, there have been several that stood out as fan favorites. But let's take a closer look at some of the first releases and the most popular and iconic sets in that series of Doom Zones. So we're gonna jump straight in with the most iconic of them all, Mighty Max Escapes from Skull Dungeon. This set featured the skull-shaped playset that could be opened to reveal a detailed interior of Dr. Frankenstein's laboratory, complete with traps and obstacles for Mighty Max to overcome. The set also included a miniature figure of Mighty Max, as well as several other figures, one of the Mad Professor and the other of Frankenstein's monster. These were great for kids to play with. This set is the most iconic of them all, and when the average person thinks of Mighty Max, this is the one that always comes to mind. I actually love this set with the secret bookcase and the trap door. It's one of those sets that I fondly remember having as a child. Next we have Mighty Max Conquers the Palace of Poison, but it's also known as the Temple of Venom. This set featured a snake-shaped playset that could be opened to reveal a treacherous Egyptian interior. Filled with creatures and deadly traps, the set included the miniature figure of Mighty Max, as well as a mummy and a giant scorpion for kids to play with. Who doesn't love a giant scorpion? This was the second most popular set to be released at the time, and again, if you had a Mighty Max, you probably had this one. The third in the series was Mighty Max Slays the Doom Dragon. This set featured a dragon-shaped playset that could be opened to reveal a fiery interior, a rickety bridge and a vine, and it come complete with a dragon boss for Mighty Max to defeat. This, along with a skull dungeon, was also released as a watch, but we'll get onto that a bit later. Another popular set was Mighty Max Terminates Warship 7. This set featured a spaceship-shaped playset that could be opened to reveal a high-tech interior, complete with alien creatures and laser weapons for Mighty Max to battle. And finally, there was Mighty Max Trap by Arachnoid set. This set featured a spider-shaped playset that could be opened to reveal the spider in its jaws, complete with spider webs and a giant arachnid monster, and of course, Mighty Max. These first Doom Zones will always be some of the most popular of the Mighty Max series, but other awesome sets were included in further series. These were Mighty Max Caught by the Man-Eater, also known as Jaws of Doom, Mighty Max Tangles with an Ape King, you had Mighty Max Bites the Cyber Skull, and one of my favorite ones was Mighty Max Crushes the Hand. This was like a graveyard monster hand. It had zombies, vines, graveyards, tombstones. It was amazing. These all featured miniature figures of Mighty Max, as well as several other figures of monsters and villains for kids to play with in the sets. 
So moving on, after these initial Doom Zones, there was a further two more series released. And along with these Doom Zones, there was also another line of smaller playsets called Horror Heads, which also had three series. The Horror Head playsets were similar to the Doom Zones in that they were smaller and featured different villains and challenges for the kids to defeat but they had a distinctive design that set them apart. In addition to the Doom Zones and the Horror Heads, there were also Monster Heads, Dread Heads, Shrunken Heads, Battle Warriors, and minifigure cards called Heroes and Villains. Each of these playsets and figures had unique designs, features, and challenges for kids to enjoy. And they even had McDonald's cashing in on this franchise by releasing two playsets that could be found in their Happy Meals. What a time to be alive. You wouldn't get that nowadays at all. They also had a small line of digital watches in which you've got a minifigure of Max inside, and when he opened it up, he just kind of stood on the top. I mean, which kid didn't want a skull as a watch with a minifigure inside? I know I did, and I know I still do. But if you wasn't a fan of these smaller playsets, and you were looking for something a little bit bigger, there were these larger playsets which consisted of Mighty Max trapped in Skull Mountain, Mighty Max takes on the Terra Talons, there was the Blast Magus, and Mighty Max storms Dragon Island. And also, there was the Mega Heads. Mighty Max Assaults Skull Masters was the first in the series, with plans for two more sets, Warmonger and Doom. But they never got released, which was such a shame. Some of these did make it to prototypes and they were seen in the Toy Fair catalogs, but they just never made it out into the wild of the toy stores. But it wasn't just the play sets that kept the kids coming back for more. Each Mighty Max character themselves had a variety of poses with different color hats and eventually different weapons. Mighty Max was not just a toy, it was an adventure that children could take with them wherever they wanted. And this is why other toy companies started to implement the miniature playset style into their merchandise for properties, including Star Wars, Godzilla, Independence Day, and even Batman Forever. Such toys would often feature a character's head as it unfolded the playset to an environment familiar with the property at hand, like Batman's head unfolding to reveal the Batcave and the Independence Day alien folding to reveal the city that he was about to destroy. Galoob's popular Micro Machine line was already a similar scale to Mighty Max, and it created a variety of miniature Star Wars head playsets ranging in sizes. And then Playmates toys introduced mini Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Star Trek playsets in 1994 and continued producing them the following year. Toy Biz, who had the Marvel franchise, even went to Bluebirds with the official Marvel license to create a set of Spider-Man, X-Men and other mini comic playsets. Everybody was at it, which was great for us kids. Mighty Max may have just been a toy, but it had definitely left its mark in the toy industry and on the world of play and imagination. Mighty Max was a toy line that captured the imagination of a generation of kids, and it continues to hold a special place in the hearts of those who played with them. It was a revolutionary concept that blended nostalgia and toy designs in a way that we had never seen before. It's a true testament to the enduring appeal of nostalgia, toy design, and enduring legacy of a toy that continues to inspire today. And it remains a beloved and fondly remembered toy line for those who grew up with it and now it's sought after by collectors to this day. The impact of Mighty Max on the toy industry was significant as it paved the way for a new generation of miniature playsets that would capture the imagination of children and collectors alike. The unique designs, the engaging stories, and the nostalgic memories that it's left with the generation that grew up with it makes it a toy line that will be remembered for years to come. I've been Paul the Toy Scavenger, and thanks for watching the Toy Scavenger's history of Mighty Max. I hope you enjoyed it, and remember to comment below on what your favorite thing about Mighty Max was. Do you still have yours? Are they even complete? Because so many were just lost down the back of the sofa or hoovered up. Do you collect them now? Leave a comment so Mighty Max can live on. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe and check out all my other videos and playlists. And I'll see you soon.